Hi, Eric here in Seville, Spain, and today we're going to talk about mixing colors with watercolor. Now everybody knows the color wheel red yellow and blue and everybody knows red and yellow make orange yellow and blue make green blue and red make <clears throat> purple that's right purple i knew that i knew that you think this is from kindergarten but actually it believe me it's not that simple you can spend your entire life thinking about color and searching for color and working with color and uh, there's really nothing simple about it in fact some of the great artists don't or didn't even use color as an important part of their work however there's other artists who use color as one of the most effective aspects of their painting these artists are sometimes called colorists and they really expressed a lot with their use of color. Okay, we're going to go over some basics now. Uh, I recommend you get a book on color theory and study that. But I also recommend you do these simple exercises and that you make your own color wheel. So why should you make a color wheel? I've got three good reasons. The first reason is you really learn what your pigments, your paints, are capable of doing and where they lie on the color wheel. The second reason is later you can use that color wheel as a reference. It's a good tool for you to use to find colors as you're painting. Keep it with you. And the third reason is that it's just a good exercise. Now, you can use a compass and a protractor and whatever and make a really nice one if you want, but I recommend you just sketch it by hand. That way you're not so worried about the results. Okay, what do we need? Let's see, we've got an eraser. This one's a kneaded eraser. It's the best for watercolor. No crumbs. Pencil, paintbrush, I hate that paintbrush. Let's see. Eh, that one's a little better. We've got paper towel, cup of water. A lot of people like to use two cups of water, one to clean and one as the source. Personally, I just use one big cup, and when it's dirty, I change the water. And the watercolor kit, the paper. Remember that paper needs to be at an angle needs to be slightly tilted and I like to use an extra palette too because the palette that comes in the kit is kind of small. Okay the first thing you should always do is put a drop of water on each little block of color. Okay let's get started. First of all let's just draw a simple circle and now we need to divide that circle into three equal parts. So we can just make a triangle. So that's where the primaries will go. Okay, let's take a look at the color wheel now. So if you were to observe light pass through a prism, or if you take a look at a rainbow, you can see that the light has been divided into different colors. And the colors at the bottom, purple, blue, green, they have a longer wavelength and those are cool colors. And the colors at the top, yellow, orange, red, they uh, are warm colors and we think of fire. So we can see that purple becomes crimson which becomes red and it goes back around so the colors actually become a continual circle and you can always think of colors in terms of their temperature 
You can think of them as warm or cool colors. Okay, we've got a set of watercolors by Winsor Newton. It's a good kit. You might notice that there's not one primary red or yellow or blue. What we have are paired primaries. So we've got a cool yellow and a warm yellow, a cool red, a warm red, and a cool blue and a warm blue. This is a good system for mixing colors. Okay, now to make our primaries, I'm just going to mix the two primaries we have together and that should make a pretty good basic primary. So I'll mix the two yellows. Okay, I'll put that here. Next, we'll make uh, primary red, same thing. Mix these two colors, scarlet or vermilion and crimson until you think it looks like a stop sign or a fire truck, a real primary color. Okay, same thing with blue. Now, why do we put the primaries down? Why don't we just take off yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red? Well, that's because it's much easier to mix colors and judge the colors you're mixing when you have other colors to compare them to. So now, our next step is to make orange, green, and purple the secondary colors. And the way we mix those is by comparing what we're mixing to the colors we have in front of us. So that orange should fall directly between red and yellow. So you have to decide when you think it looks orange, not too close to red, and not too close to yellow. This blue, it's warmer. It's going towards green. So that's the blue we want to use. That yellow is a little bit greenish. So that's the one we're going to use to make a nice green. Okay, to make purple, it's very important that we don't use that scarlet red, because it's orange. The yellow in that red will push our purple towards brown or gray. So to make pure purple, we need to use crimson and ultramarine blue. Okay, we've got our primaries and our secondaries. Now we need to work on our tertiaries. These colors are yellow-orange, red-orange, reddish-violet or crimson, blue-violet, blue-green, and yellowish-green. Okay, well I hope that video was helpful. Keep practicing your colors and your color wheels. And if you like this video, please 
give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll have more videos about color painting and drawing thanks a lot